after studying this module you shall be able to know the concept of self esteem learn the types and components of self esteem identify characteristics of people with high or low self esteem and evaluate importance of self esteem in our life The pursuit of self-esteem by people is so pervasive that many psychologists consider it as a universal human need. According to James, the concept of self-esteem generally refers to a person's evaluation of or attitude towards him or herself. The major themes that underlie most of the conceptions of self-esteem are self-esteem refers to a person's evaluation of self People are generally motivated to maintain high levels of self-esteem and people defend their self-esteem when it comes under threat. Hence, self-esteem simply means positive or negative evaluation of oneself. Whereas high self-esteem refers to a highly favorable global evaluation of the self, low self-esteem refers to an unfavorable definition of the self. Overall, feelings of self-worth are often referred to as global self-esteem. It includes all the dimensions of an individual's talents capabilities, accomplishments and personality such as academic self-esteem, social self-esteem, physical self-esteem and several other areas that are still being studied. Two dimensions that are central to self-esteem are self-competence and self-liking. According to Taffarodi and Swan, self-competence can be defined as the sense of one's capability derived from multiple experiences of successful intentional goal pursuit. Taffarodi, Marshall and Milne Define self-liking as a purely subjective evaluation of ourselves as capable and personal fondness for the self.
According to James, self-esteem is like a barometer that rises and falls as a function of one's aspirations and success experiences. Self-esteem can be manifested either as straight self-esteem or state self-esteem. Hence, besides context dependence, overall sense of self-esteem is derived by people by averaging feelings about themselves across a number of different social situations. Thus, self-esteem is a relatively enduring disposition from which there is some degree of deviation. State self-esteem is how we feel about or evaluate ourselves at a given point in time. Straight self-esteem defines whether people characteristically have high or low self-regard. High self-esteem has been found to be strongly related to the beliefs people hold about themselves. Looking at the vast body of research on self-esteem, it is clear that most of the literature deals with global self-esteem, which is the individual's positive or negative attitude toward the self as a totality. In the last decade, however, a number of writers have stressed the importance of studying specific self-esteem as well. Global self-esteem has been found to be more relevant to psychological well-being. Specific self-esteem is more relevant to behavior. Explicit self-esteem refers to the concrete positive or negative evaluations people make of themselves a more conscious and deliberative assessment of the self. Implicit self-esteem refers to the less conscious evaluations we make of ourselves. Implicit self-esteem is generally viewed as an efficient evaluation of the self as it occurs without awareness. Greenwald and Banerjee defined implicit self-esteem as the introspectively unidentified effect of the self attitude on evaluation of self-associated and self-dissociated objects. Some recent researchers now focus more on implicit self-esteem. Cultural differences have also been observed on self-esteem.
Watson and Clark found individual differences in the extent to which people experience positive and negative affective states. They further added that negative and positive affectivity may both be independently associated with self-esteem. Emphasis has been given on the role of early affective experiences in determining an individual's sense of emotional well-being or self-worth by several developmental psychologists. Even very young infants have the ability to realize that they typically receive either acceptance or rejection from others and later such early social experiences are translated into a basic sense of pride or shame. This sense of worthiness serves as the foundation of self-esteem and also influences the way adults later see themselves and their worlds. As children become 3 to 4 years old and develop belief systems, they form specific self-views about themselves. This constitutes the cognitive component of self-esteem. This complements the relatively undifferentiated sense of self-worth developed earlier. Various classic perspectives on the self suggest that people's specific self-views should be related to their global self-esteem. People with high self-esteem have a clear sense of what their personal qualities are. They think well of themselves set appropriate and realistic goals, use feedback as positive motivator, and have the ability to cope successfully with difficult situations. People with high self-esteem remember their daily experiences more favorably, a memory bias that may itself strengthen high self-esteem. Other qualities include self-confidence, awareness of personal strengths, good self-care, ability to accept mistakes of others and self, optimism, non-blaming behavior, feeling comfortable with a wide range of emotions, ability to solve problems, ability to trust others, independent and cooperative attitude, a good sense of personal limitations, self-direction, ability to say no, etc. People with low self-esteem have less clear self-conceptions, they think poorly of themselves, remember their past more negatively, wallow in their negative mood, have more adverse emotional and behavioral reactions to criticism or other kinds of negative feedback. People with low self-esteem often select unrealistic goals or shy away from goals altogether. They tend to be pessimistic about the future and are less able to generate positive feedback for themselves. They are also more concerned about their social impact on other people and are more vulnerable to depression or rumination when they encounter setbacks or stress. Other characteristics include negative view of life, shyness, perfectionist attitude, fear of taking risks, feeling of being unloved, mistrusting others, blaming behavior, dependence, etc. Self-esteem in children becomes more distinct as they grow. It may vary among different domains. For example, a child may have high academic self-esteem but lower physical self-esteem or vice versa. The characteristics of children with very high self-esteem are boastful, arrogant, experience school success, feel happy and satisfied, make healthy choices, demonstrate effective coping skills, etc. Characteristics of children with low self-esteem are 
hesitant to take risks or move out of their comfort zone, often talk and think negatively about themselves, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, interpersonal problems, loneliness, gang membership, obesity, suicidal tendencies, etc. Studies suggest that children's self-esteem is also affected by how much they feel accepted, liked and loved, especially by parents and significant others. Many theories have been proposed on the concept of self-esteem. One influential theory on how self develop was given by Eric Erikson, who argued for a stage theory of ego development. He maintained that although identity formation is a lifelong task, it is of critical importance during adolescence and young adulthood. This time marks the transition between childhood and adulthood. This identity provides a basis for making job or career plans and for establishing intimate relationships. According to Desai and Ryan, self-determination theory suggests that humans have three innate psychological needs, competence, autonomy and relatedness. Competence refers to feeling effective in interacting with one's environment. Autonomy refers to feeling that one's behavior is freely chosen and relatedness refers to the desire to be connected to others. This theory argues that conditions that are supportive of these three needs will foster behavior that is self-determined or motivated by personal choice rather than external control. The sociometer theory by Leary maintains that self-esteem explains one's level of status and acceptance in one's social group. Leary suggested the sociometer is an evolutionary derived pre-human module that aids an organism in monitoring its relational value. Abraham Maslow suggested that self-esteem is a basic human need or motivation. He included self-esteem in his hierarchy of needs. He described two different forms of self-esteem, the need for respect from others and the need for self-esteem. Respect from others includes recognition, acceptance, status and appreciation and was believed to be more fragile and easily lost than inner self-esteem. He further argued that without the fulfillment of the self-esteem need, individuals will be driven to seek it and unable to grow and obtain self-actualization, which is the highest of all the needs. Another theory, terror management theory by Becker, maintains that self-esteem serves a protective function and reduces anxiety about life and death. Thus, theory offers a different account of the function of self-esteem that focuses on its role in managing existential concerns. Carl Rogers also focused on the concept of self. His theory maintains that the origin of problems for many people is that they despise themselves which makes them feel invaluable and unworthy of being loved. Thus he focused on unconditional positive regard in his client-centered therapy. The concept of self-esteem is approached since then in humanistic psychology as an inalienable right of every person. People's beliefs shape their actions in various ways and these actions in turn shape the social realities of the people around them. Over the past years, the need for high self-esteem has risen from an individual to a societal concern. Since low self-esteem lies at the root of individual as well as societal problems, interventions can be made both at the individual and the societal level. Self-esteem plays an important role in academic performance. Wiley found that the correlation between self-esteem and students' grade point averages was about 0.30. Hansford and Hattie concluded that self-esteem accounts for between 4 and 7% of the variance in academic performance. In terms of relationships, 
people with high self esteem claim to be specially popular they also rate their friendships as being of higher quality compared with people with low self esteem positive affect such as pride is produced temporarily by the successful pursuit of self esteem in contrast failure at goals that are linked to self esteem leads to drops in state self esteem and increases in sadness anger shame and other intensely negative emotions low self esteem is also linked to stress coronary heart disease and antisocial behavior according to taylor and brown low self esteem has been found to be associated with pessimism about the future and with negative beliefs that one lacks in abilities and competence whereas high self esteem has been found to be associated with optimism about the future and with positive beliefs about one's skills and abilities also people pursue self esteem because high self esteem is positively linked to a sense of competence control and optimism about one's ability to attain certain goals and desired outcomes in terms of motivational benefits people pursue self esteem because they believe it brings benefits such as professional or financial success love or fame many great acts of generosity altruism helping artistic and scientific accomplishments are motivated by the pursuit of self esteem however the pursuit of self esteem can sometimes interfere with learning and performance under difficult or challenging circumstances can lead to poor self regulation and undermine autonomy and relationship size 0 long straight hair and fair complexion define the look among females seen in beauty advertisements these advertisements influence women because they compare themselves and try to look like the women they see in these advertisements thus body dissatisfaction has reached normative levels among girls and young women these kinds of advertisements are also affecting women's self esteem today Many women look at these advertisements and they feel that they are not up to those standards have low self esteem and do not feel that they are beautiful enough this leads to eating disorders such as bulimia and anorexia among women and young girls having low self esteem The measurement of self esteem is a long standing issue in psychology. Researchers have proposed a wide range of self esteem measures over the years. The vast majority of researchers use self report measures. Of these, the Rosenberg self esteem scale is the most widely used. Apart from the self report measures, the other used measures of self esteem are experience sampling measures pictorial measures for children q sort type measures based on observer judgments peer ratings self ideal discrepancy measures ratings and reaction time measures Kling Height Showers and Buswell in 1999 conducted an analysis to examine gender differences in global self esteem 
A computerized literature search gave 216 effect sizes. The overall effect size was 0.21, a small difference favoring males. The largest effect emerged in late adolescence. In the second analysis, gender differences were examined using three large nationally representative data sets from the National Center for Education Statistics. All of the NCES effect sizes indicated higher male self-esteem. Hence, the two analyses provide evidence that males score higher on standard measures of global self-esteem than females. However, this difference is small. Given the importance of high self-esteem as demonstrated in numerous studies and the fact that it is pursued by people universally, it is generally assumed that high self-esteem is always desirable and it always produces positive results. However, many studies have shown that this is not always the case. Burmeister, Heatherton and Tice reported that the tendency for people with high self-esteem to make inflated evaluations and predictions about themselves may lead them to make commitments that exceed their capabilities, thereby leading to failure. In their study, results showed the dangers of letting egoistical illusions interfere with self-regulation processes. The idea that narcissistically high self-esteem is unhealthy is also supported by findings that narcissists' high self-esteem tends to be unstable and self-defensive. Usually, it is assumed that people low in self-esteem would be more prone to aggressive behaviors. However, many studies have proved this wrong. For instance, Burmeister A. All concluded that perpetrators of aggression generally hold favorable and inflated views of themselves. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. Self-esteem is the positive or negative evaluation of oneself. Two dimensions are central to self-esteem, which are self-competence and self-liking. Self-esteem is manifested as straight self-esteem or state self-esteem. Qualities of people with high self-esteem are self-confidence, optimism, self-direction, etc. Qualities of people with low self-esteem are negative view of oneself, dependence, setting unrealistic goals, etc. Main theories of self-esteem are Erickson's stage theory, need hierarchy theory, self-determination theory, terror management theory, sociometer theory, and self-theory. Measurement of self-esteem involves self-report measures, pictures, Q-sort, peer ratings, self-ideal discrepancy measures, reaction time measures, etc. The overall gender differences in self-esteem are low, with males being slightly higher.